G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about latency. Latency, it is time travel. That's what it is, time travel. And the reason I want to talk about latency today is because I've been reviewing the Runcam Eagle FPV camera. Now this is a pretty cool camera. It is a digital analog hybrid kind of camera. Now to date the best kinds of FPV cameras have been CCD based and they've been analog because CCDs give you a really good image capture and the analog side of things means there's no delay, there's no latency and basically the, the CCD sensor can give you a much greater wide dynamic range and things. So the HS1177, the PZ0420, those two numbers that come up or two cameras that come up whenever you're talking about high quality FPV. But it's changing, the game is changing. I've never been a fan of CMOS cameras until recently. One of the problems with CMOS cameras is that, that they're more subject to jello. When you've got vibration, the picture can look totally crap. The same environment, the same vibration, sometimes with the CCD, you won't even notice it. That's the, it's like night and day in terms of the jello handling. Now these new cameras, they don't, they're no better in terms of handling jello, but their light handling is astonishing, as you'll see in the review of the Eagle camera when I put that up very shortly. But Today I say latency because when I read the specs for the Eagle camera, it said it had a latency of 45 milliseconds. And this is how we write 45 milliseconds. And that seemed like quite a bit, quite a bit, uh, given that your average CCD camera has virtually no latency. In fact, the latency varies depending on which part of the picture you're looking at and, and how it is through its frame cycle if you, and what system you're using. If you're using PAL, it's 50 frames a second, 50 interlaced frames, so you have up to 20 milliseconds of latency, so that's a, less than half that, but mostly it'll be somewhere in between, so it might be like um, 10 milliseconds, which is less than a quarter of that, so four times the latency with this um, Runcam Eagle, what's that going to mean? Because we can talk about these numbers, and, and I can tell you, I can feel the latency when I fly with the Runcam Eagle compared to a, an HS1177, but is the latency going to cause problems if you're trying to fly a mini quad through a tight course and you need every you know every second every millisecond counts well I tried to think of a way I could show you how important it was or how unimportant it was and finally come up with this I'm going to talk about the distances we're going to quantify what 45 milliseconds of latency means to somebody flying a model and here's how we're going to do it I'm going to look at mini quads right so everyone flies mini quads okay you don't but all the other people standing around you yeah, they fly mini quads an average mini quad not a hyper good racing machine but an average mini quad that you might buy off the shelf probably going to have a speed of around about 100 kilometers an hour 100 kilometers per hour that's a hundred thousand meters per hour in old money if you live in america and you still deal in old money it's about 62 miles per hour and i think also the english still do miles an hour don't they hello miles an hour the rest of the world's moved on we do kilometers now but you guys do miles per hour so that's pretty quick for a mini quad but what is this latency going to mean and to work that out i figured how far does a mini quad travel in a second, for example, if it's doing a, or anything that's traveling 100 kilometers an hour, how fast does it move in a second? And to get the solution to that, you take 100,000 and you divide it by 3,600 because 3,600 is the number of seconds in an hour. So if we divide the distance traveled in an hour by the number of seconds in an hour, we know how far you travel in a second. And the answer to that is 27 meters per second. It's quite a long way. As again, in the uh, in the old money, that's uh, what is that? It's about um, thirty yards. So there you go. That's it. That's just a lot of feet. Twelve, three hundred and sixty feet. Is it? I don't know. No, of course it's not. I've got it wrong. It's three, three. I don't know. It's nine, ninety feet or something. It's a long way. It's it's a, it's a long way. So you travel a long way in a second. But we're not talking about one second. We're talking about forty-five milliseconds, which can also be written, of course, as zero point zero four five seconds here we go so we need to know or i'd like to know we don't need to but i'd like to know how far is this 100 kilometer an hour model traveling in 45 milliseconds so we can work that out as well to do that we multiply this number by uh what have we got 0 0.045 and that gives us 1.25 it's actually 1.2499 but we'll round it up because it's easier one and a quarter meters is the time that this craft will travel during the 45 milliseconds that the Runcam Eagle is thinking about the picture, doing some crunching, you know, manipulating it, bit shifting and doing all the digitally bits and then converting those digitally bits into analog bits to poke out to your video transmitter. So 
your craft will travel 1.25 meters. That's not a very long distance at all. So, hey, I don't think 45 milliseconds is going to make a snot load of difference. Right, now I'm going to give some real world examples here. Well, not real world, but we'll look at some pictures because everybody loves pictures. Now, let's say we have a mini quad racing area and here is a gate, as we all know. Um, and you're flying along with your mini quad and here it is here. I just draw, I'm not going to draw a mini quad with props. Oh, I haven't got time. Life's too short. There's a mini quad, right? Let's assume you are four meters from that gate. And uh, when you're looking through your goggles and it looks like you're four meters from that gate. But what's happening is, this is 45 milliseconds in the past. You've done time traveling. It's just like Doctor Who. You've traveled back 45 milliseconds to see that picture. So what this really means is that your quad has actually gone on an extra, let's draw the lines here, 1.25 meters. This is this number here. During the time, during the time that it's taken for this, the camera to calculate things out and stuff the, the picture out, the, the spout to your video transmitter, your quad has actually moved on this far. So in reality, you are now only 2.75 meters from that gate. So you're closer than it looks. So you have to uh, take that into account. Now, so if you're four meters from a gate, you know, that can, it's going to make a little bit of an effect. But how much of an effect? Well, we need to look at things like reaction times, and let's do that. Okay, let's talk reaction times. I've done some Googling. I know how to use the interwebs, and I found out that there's, a, there's a, a range, a huge range in human reaction times. If you're really, really good, if you're a Boris B or a Metal Danny or a Mr. Steel or a Final Glide or any of those really ace guys, you're probably, your re reaction time is probably about 190 milliseconds. That's how long it takes for your brain to react to a visual stimulus and start doing something like moving your thumbs or pressing the brake pedal in your car or something. 190 milliseconds. Now, that's interesting because how far does that 100 kilometer an hour quad travel in 190 milliseconds? Well, it actually travels about five meters. That's as far as it travels, five meters. So in the time you see something to the time you actually start to react, it doesn't include actually moving the sticks or anything like that. The time it takes for your brain to work out what's going on and decide on a course of action your quad has traveled to five meters, which means if you're flying at 100 kilometers an hour and suddenly someone dropped a huge obstruction five meters in front of your quad, you're going to hit it <laughs> because you may have, uh, even Boris B would have seen it and started to react, but he still wouldn't have had time to throw the switch or flick the sticks or whatever. So there you go, five meters. And remember the, the latency of the run cam eagle at 45 milliseconds is one and a quarter meters. So your own reaction time is much greater than the latency of that camera. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, you've got old codgers like me, my reaction time, it's, well, to measure my reaction time, I had to use a calendar. That's how slow I am, but normally fit human beings who are, you know, not too old. It's about 300 milliseconds is closer to the average reaction time. And in that time, your quad would have traveled about eight meters. So again, that 1.25 meters of latency doesn't mean a hell of a lot, does it? When you compare it to the actual reaction times. And so 45 milliseconds, yeah, I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference to most quad flies. Now you may have somebody, I don't know, there's rumors that Boris B's reaction times are too small to be measured. That even with an atomic clock, they cannot measure them, it's so fast, but that's just a rumor. Um, so I'd say, yeah, 45 milliseconds, you could probably, I'm pretty sure you can fly around it. You can adapt quickly. I remember when I started, um, not when I started, yeah, actually when I started flying 3D, uh, with fixed wing models and things like rolling harriers, incredibly, you know, a lot of thumb movement with a rolling harrier. You've got to coordinate your rudder and your elevator and your throttle and your ailerons all at once. And I started learning to fly with PPM, the old FM days, you know, just PPM, just, you know, nothing fancy. And I got my rolling harriers pretty good. I could do a rolling harrier. Then I switched to a PCM receiver and I couldn't fly a rolling harrier to save myself because there was latency introduced by the PPM system because it was slower than sorry, latency introduced by the PCM system, it's slower than PPM because, again, we had stuff turned into digital and then back into analog and so forth, and that conversion process takes time. So even though it was only a few milliseconds, in fact, it was probably, I think, 20 milliseconds that the PCM added, it threw out my timing completely. So, yeah, you will notice it. But then again, within a matter of a couple of weekends flying with PCM, I was good as gold again because my, my mind, my reflexes adapted to the latency. 
And this is what's going to happen with a mini quad if you've got a light camera with a, a small amount of latency. Now, obviously, there are some cameras that you just couldn't really race a mini quad with. Something like some of these high definition recording cameras, you know, the 1080p or even the 4K cameras. The latency they introduce is enormous. It's sometimes measured in hundreds of milliseconds. And so that just, you cannot compensate for that much latency. When the latency starts becoming as much as your own reaction time, things go to hell in a handbasket. So, um, but when we're dealing with a small latency like 45 milliseconds, it's only 1.25 meters at 100 kilometers an hour. I'm going to show you some pictures here. I've gone out with my little mini quad, and here is a shot of a nice little bush, which I'd want to fly between the little gap here. And this is what it looks like from four meters. And remember that when you saw that image, this is actually what the quad is seeing here at 2.75 meters. So that's the difference. And I'll do it again. Here is the quad at 10 meters from the obstruction. And here is where it actually, what it, well, that's what it looks like. But this is what the quad is actually seeing itself taking the latency into account, because it would actually be at 8.75 meters. So yeah, not a big change in most of these images. So I'm not really worried about the latency. And, and as I say, I like the Runcam Eagle a lot. It's a great little camera. In the review, I'll be looking at how it does 16.9 versus 4.3, because I was a bit disappointed in the way it does 16.9. I use 16.9 goggles most of the time, and I would love to have had a camera that did 16.9 properly, but it doesn't quite do it properly and I'll tell you why. But the 4.3 camera, love it. Love it to bits for mini quad racing. And the 16.9 is brilliant if you are flying fixed wing. And I'll explain the reasons for that in the review. Suffice to say that the Runcam Eagle is going to go on all my fixed wing FP models. Not sure about multi-rotors yet. Watch the review. It's coming up. In the meantime, if you've got questions, comments, anything to say about this whole subject of latency and and so forth, then chime in, stick it in the part below this video that YouTube thoughtfully provides for the purpose. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.